So today we're going to delve a little bit more into uh, pointers and dynamic memory. And here we have a simple program that we're going to try and reproduce. All it's doing is it's reading a file, getting the lines from the file, and putting those lines into a, pushing them back into a vector. And then once the, the, all the lines in the file are in a vector, it will print the vector. That's it. So uh, we can take a look at what's in the file called fruit. And it's just a few lines of text. And so now, oops, if I run this, it works. OK? So I get the, I get the re I read the file, put it into a vector, and print the vector. No problems. Let's try and do this in a different way now, uh, without using vector and without even using arrays. Let's just try using pointers. So to do this, um, I've created here. Uh, perhaps I've got a lot of, may, perhaps many, too many comments here. But in any case, I've got a. Uh, a character pointer pointer, v. And then I allocate 64 character pointers to v. Open the file stream. While not end of file, I say new, create 32 letters for a c string and assign that to one of the pointers. And then I use the insertion stream operator. And then I can go ahead and print it. Now, there are problems with this. There's a number of problems I'm going to try and fix. Let's go through the, pro well, actually, first, let's run it. And then, oh, before I run it, let's just continue finishing the description of the program. Um, so this is going to print the memory location of V. This is going to print the first. Sh I'm hoping you would print the first line, but I know it's not. It's going to print the first word. And you'll see why we've got a problem. And this is going to try to print the first letter of the first line. And um, then I don't actually need this line. So let's just delete this right now. Then what I do is I go ahead and print the things inside my newly created um, character array, which is accessible through my pointers. And once I print it, I'm going to delete each one, as I called new on each one. And then finally, when the whole thing's over, I'll call delete on uh, v, which is the the main pointer to the to the whole object. Okay, so let's try running it and let's see what happens here. Okay, so the first line, yeah, I get the memory location. Uh, this is not the first line of my file, but rather the first word. So that's a problem. And this is, in fact, the first letter of the first word, so that's good. And then I go ahead and try and print everything. And it seems to kind of work, but not exactly, because, and I, I'm sure you can figure out the problem here. The problem is that the extraction operator is space delimited. So using this, uh, oops. Sorry, the well. I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to show you is the file here. So I notice there's a space between orange and tree. So so tree goes into the second element, right? That's not really what I wanted. I wanted each line, including the spaces. So in this case, I think perhaps it's better if I if I use um, get line. 
So that's one issue. The other, there's another couple of issues as well. The other issue is that, uh, what if I have more than 64 lines in my file? That's, that's another issue. And then there's another issue still, and that is, what if I have more than 32 letters on the line? So notice I've hard-coded the, uh, the amount of memory that is required here, and I'm just basically hoping that I don't go out of bounds in this case. Like I hope that the, the, the words are not more than 32 characters because I end, up, I end up taking words instead of the line. But nonetheless, um, in this case, right, then if they're words, then I hope that I don't have more than 64 words. So it's kind of like compounded because of the fact that now this 64, because I'm doing, I'm grabbing words, not lines, now it becomes a, an issue of saying, okay, well, the words, I can't have more than 64 words, and now the 32 is hopefully I don't have more than 32 letters per word. Whereas what I really want to do is I want to grab each line at a time. So that's the issue at hand. And so now the question lies is, how would you fix this such that it would do the right thing. So here is my solution to the problem at hand. What we have is essentially, this is a function I've got uh, called file size, which returns the number of lines in a file. And it'll be clear in a moment why I require this. Although I have written this in three different ways. Uh, the two ways that I'm familiar with getting the number of lines in a file. That's what this, this function here does. Um, the two ways that I know how to do it is, let's say this method here. You could just do while get line from the file f, put it in a dummy string. We're not going to need that. And then just every time you do get line, you call uh, lines plus plus. And, and then you, you would return lines. That's, that's, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is going into a while loop and saying while not end of file, um, get a character. And then if the character is equal to the new line, then lines plus plus. There is one very slight difference between these two here, the commented one and the one that gets a character at a time. And the difference, I think, would be if you have one line and you have no new line at the end, then perhaps lines would return as zero, whereas I think get line would still uh, return one. So perhaps if I had to choose which of these two I like better, um, I, would go with, um, I would go with the top one. So let me comment out the bottom stuff here. And uh, yeah, so let me take this out. And so the bottom stuff, there is a third option, and that's just basically one line. Um, I actually just looked this up. Um, I, don't, I don't know this offhand. It's using an input buffer stream uh, iterator, or I should say an input stream buffer iterator. and you know, count is from algorithm, and essentially we're saying from the beginning of the stream to the end of the stream, uh, count the number of new lines. So essentially, this this solution to to counting the number of lines is 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 doing the same thing as counting the number of lines this way. But personally, I find I find this. Uh, oops, what did I just do there? I find uh, this m much, much easier to understand for me uh, as opposed to this, even though this is a shorter line, it, it's just what you're comfortable with. In any case, uh, let's leave it with, with the get line. And um, so, oh, we have to, I think we have to comment stuff out here. So. 
There we go. OK. And so now it tells me how many lines are in the file. That's just for debugging purposes, just so that I know it's working properly, and it returns the number of lines. OK, let's go down into the main. Now, once again, why is this important? Well, it's because I create a const unsigned int lines, and I call file size on the function fruit. And now I know how many lines are in the, in the, the file fruit. Then I make a character pointer pointer v, dynamically allocate on the heap the number of lines that I need. Okay, so this is different from before because now instead of crossing my fingers and saying, gosh, I hope there's not more than 64 lines of code, now I'm actually uh, allocating the correct number. Now I did have to read the file previously in order to figure that out, but that's okay. Um, now I open the file again, right? Because I, remember I did close it up here, so I'll open it again. Now we're going to read it again, but this time we're going to, uh, so when we grab the line in the, in the while loop and put everything into string s, then we're going to, on the heap again, allocate now for each v, for each, you know, you remember how this works again, right? With the, uh, with the kind of the drawing. We kind of went over this before, but if I show you again, um, here, right? So V is pointing to, so, you know, like um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now, so these are all like, you could consider them uh, X or whatever. And then now all of these guys are pointers pointing to character arrays. Okay, and these are holding character arrays. So that's that's what's happening here. So now, on this line, I'm now saying how many characters I want to allocate or um, you know request from the operating system. How much memory I require. Now I'm going to go size plus one because I need one more for the null byte because I'm going to actually change this uh, string into a C string. And when I do that, when I call dot C string here, it's going to add the null byte. And I can show you that here. It says for, for, um, for dot C string, it says this. Are, so it says here the string out plus an additional terminating null byte at the end. So um, it, that's why I, I needed the extra character for the null byte. So um, I'm simply allocating enough memory here. Then I can either do this one of two ways. Honestly, doing string n copy is unnecessary here because I know that that string now is going to fit inside perfectly because that's exactly how many I've allocated. So either of these would work, but um, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter which one I use. Uh, let's just, let's, for the, for the sake of uh, just simplicity, um, we could just use the bottom one. I know you're using string copy can be dangerous, but in this case, we know that we've allocated the correct amount of memory for that specific string plus one that C string is going to add the byte to. Anyways, um, after we've done that, we then go through and print the stuff that we printed before. And we'll print out the, the string in the loop. And then after we print it, we'll delete that and then set the pointer to null pointer. And this was just actually just for debugging purposes. I can get rid of this. And then we'll delete the main pointer to the whole structure. And then we'll set that equal to null as well. OK? So let's try running this. And notice this time, things are slightly different. And this is the way I wanted it to work. 
This time, I'm, I'm getting each line on its own as I should. And the cool thing about this is, is that, you know, I'm allocating only the right amount of memory that I require. So this is, I would say, this is more low level than using the, um, I mean, it's much more complicated, I think, than the other method that we use with vector and string. Let me show you that. So there it is. So this right-hand side, this is just using um, vector and string and using pushback, right? The first example I showed you. This is so much simpler, so much more high level. Uh, this, is, this is lower level. We're doing everything manually here. We're allocating all the memory manually and releasing all the memory manually. And um, th these C outs here are just, just for fun, just to show you what's going on. We don't need them, but nonetheless, we still needed to write a function to, um, we didn't have to write a function, but I thought it'd be nice to write a function to get the uh, number of lines in the file. And in that way, you see, I don't have to guess how many lines there are. I can, wh when I allocate the memory on the heap, I can specify exactly how many um, pointers I want and one pointer per line. So for my next example, um, I wanted to show you guys the pointers to a struct. Okay, So in this example here, I'm creating a struct called movie. And a movie has a string and an integer, which is the title and the year. Notice my semicolon here. So I've made my struct. Now when I go into main, I create a movie called A, I make a movie pointer called P, and I set P equal to the address of A. Now I could have done, I could have actually allocated a new um, one on the heap as well. Yeah, so I just thought I would show you anyways, like it's really simple to do, right? Uh, instead of setting it to the address of an existing movie, we could also uh, instantiate it on the, on the heap as well. In any case, either way will work. Just remember, if you call new, you're going to have to call delete. But the point that I want to make here is that title and year, OK, are they're the, you use the dot notation on the, so like if I was to go like, if I was to go, um, if I was to use the A, which is a movie type, right? So if I went A dot title equals Star Wars or whatever, you know, Star Trek, for example, to be different, um, that's how I would use. Remember, that's the notation. The dot notation is how you access uh, the members of a struct. So therefore, obviously, to get A now, we would just go dereference P. The problem that you have to be careful about is you have to use these brackets. If you don't use these brackets, it won't work. Watch what happens if I try and run this. Okay? It says, well, it, it, it's even smart enough actually to tell me what I probably wanted to do. So. So my point here is that in order for this to work, we have to um, we have to use brackets around dereferencing the pointer, such that then the dot notation for the uh, members of the struct will work. So, question: You know. Do you have to do this all the time? And the answer is no. In fact, this is not the recommended way to do it. The recommended way to do it is using the arrow operator, which is a dash and then a greater than symbol. So my point being is that line 19 and line 22 is exactly the same. The strings are different, but essentially p, the pointer, and then arrow is the same as bracket star p bracket. However, 
I'm going to state this again, use the arrow operator. That's the preferred way to do it. OK? So after I've, after I've set them, I can also use them to access those elements as well in the C out. Notice this is exactly the same. These two lines are identical, and so are these. I just want you to see both ways of doing it, and I also want you to note that the arrow is the preferred syntax. And of course, if I run this, you'll see that um, it works just fine both ways. OK? All right, so our next topic is void pointers. So right now, up to this point, you've learned that whenever you have any data type, like an int, double, well, let's not think about a bool here. Let's just leave bools out for a second. Um, so here, we've got an int and a double. Obviously, they take different amounts of memory to store an integer and a different amount of memory to store a double. Now, um, when we create these two types, that's really easy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function and I'm going to send the address here of the double. Okay, So now, I've, I've written a function here. And I'm accepting a void pointer. Now, this is interesting because this pointer now has no type associated with it. So all it is is an address. That's it. Question, can we dereference this guy? So watch what happens uh, if we try this. Let me take this out. And let's take this guy out too. Let's just try to dereference the, the, the pointer. And obviously, the problem with this is that the program is not going to know how much memory to read. Let's just see if this will even compile. And it says, yeah, void pointer is not a pointer to an object type. Now, that's my code there. But um, it says unused variable for the warning. That's OK. Uh, we, could, we could just um, do something like to fix that. You know, um, well, I'm not, I'm not worried about the unused thing right now. It's not, not important. I don't need to get rid of that warning. My point now here is, is we can't do this. Okay, we can't dereference it because it has no type associated with it. So remember, this is a hard and fast rule. You can't dereference a void pointer. So what's the purpose of the void pointer? Well, it's that you can cast it into whatever you like. So you can pass the address of whatever object you want and then cast it into the correct type later on. So for example, here, um, if I said, if I created a new pointer that had a type associated with it, let's say an integer pointer, okay. now this isn't going to work in this case because I'm sending here on line 18. So uh, let's, let's take this line out and let's put this line in. Now, notice I'm creating pointer P and it now does have an, uh, a type associated with it. It's a double pointer. And now, here, I'm going to cast, using these brackets, okay, cast the void pointer v into a double pointer. And now when I do that, I can dereference p, and it'll work properly. Watch. Okay? Just ignore the unused variable issue. But you see, this works properly. It compiles. It runs. I get 4.9. Okay? And now, Watch, if I change this around and I set and I call foo with the address of i, now I can cast it into an integer using the same thing, and now I can print it out again, and this should work also. There it is.
okay? I get the 3 from i. So essentially, what I need you to understand here is that a void pointer is a pointer with no type associated with it, so it's just a memory address, but we cannot dereference it because C++ doesn't know how much memory to read when it gets dereferenced. Because remember, the reason why a pointer has to have a type associated with it is because C++ needs to know how much memory to read when it gets to that memory location, when it's, when it's dereferencing it. Okay? And think about what, the, what, does it, what does it mean to dereference. So this on line 11 here is the dereferencing it. We're accessing it. So it has to read that memory location and then send it to the screen on the, with C out. So the last example we're going to do today is function pointers. So a function pointer is very different from allocating memory because we're not actually allocating memory here. So here I've created, well, there's the prototypes for four functions. And I've, you, it's pretty obvious what they're going to do. They're down, the implementations down here, okay, below int main. Really simple functions just for learning purposes, right? Um, however, if we take a look at what I'm going to do with these guys, the, the syntax for this might seem kind of like look at line 14 what, what kind of syntax is that well let me let me make it clear as to what's going on here so let's kind of move this over and um, oops okay I'm having trouble moving that just so there it is so let's go through the syntax here that is the return type Okay, so it's going to return a, this function pointer is going to return an integer. This is the pointer. And notice in this case, I have an array of four pointers. Okay, and these are the function arguments. So that, that's how you actually uh, declare this function pointer. Now, perhaps, you know, it might might be, maybe I should have made a simpler example first of just a single function pointer. Why don't I do that? So you can see here, what I've got is just a simple single function and what I've done is I've specified the return type. I'm specifying the function pointer in brackets. And then I'm specifying the argument types that it will accept. Then, so once it's declared, I can assign it like I assign any other thing. And I assigned it to sum, which is going to add the two. So then I can call the function by dereferencing q, the pointer q. And now imagine that when I dereference the pointer q, I'm actually uh, going to need the arguments to pass to it. So it's just like saying sum here. By the way, there's one thing I should point out. And that is that since q is a pointer, you would think that I should go like that and set it equal to the address of sum. Well, you know what? That works too, but it's optional. Okay, so there's no other, there's, there's no confusion as to what else it could be, right? Because sum is a function, so therefore, whether or not you put the ampersand to explicitly declare the address of the function or not, it's going to do the same thing. So you can leave it in there. It's fine if you do. And it's also fine if you, if you don't have the ampersand in there. So for example, if I run this now, uh, I'm going to get the 7 at the top. 
So I'm going to stop the program and let's go through the rest of it. So the next thing I do is here in this example, when I create the function pointer, I create not one, but I create four pointers. And then I'm going to use, because this is now an array of pointers, I'm going to use an initialization list to set them equal to my four functions that I've created. By the way, once again, I can either have the ampersands in front of the function name or not, and it'll do the same thing. Okay, it's optional again. So, uh, by the way, the other, the other way that I could do this if I did not use an, an initialization list is to declare the, uh, the function pointer array and then assign them individually after I create them instead of using, instead of using an initialization array. Okay? Um, now, what do I do after that? Well, I use scanf, which is kind of like cin, and I'm going to grab two integers. And when I grab those integers, then I'm going to call, notice here, now I can iterate over my four functions. And because I'm going to dereference the function pointer, which is the function, and then I'm going to pass it the arguments i and j. Right? So it's just like it's just like this portion here of code is being replaced by the function name. When I dereference the function, it's actually a pointer to not uh, not data, but rather it's a memory location where the function is. So it's a pointer to code. It's pointing to code, not data. So that's that's a really cool way pointers can be used. Let's let's give it a shot and let's let's run it and see what it looks like. So uh, I'll put in two numbers, say six and five. I've got to put a space in between them. And so there you go. Six plus five is eleven. Six minus five is one, and six times five is thirty. And then 6 divided by 5 is 1. And by the way, remember, this is integer division. So 6 divided by 5 is 1. OK, so because integer divided by integer, unlike Python, right, especially Python 3 uh, is different from Python 2, but that's a different world. But um, yeah, integer division. So there you go. It's kind of a, it's, it's really cool that we can do that and we can reference functions using pointers. The only thing that I would say that you kind of have to get used to here is the syntax here. If you haven't seen this before, like I said, it will look a little weird. But uh, once you've seen it, it's not so bad. And as I mentioned before in my graphic here, uh, I kind of explain what is going on there. And you know, in terms of this was the example for the array of them. But for in terms of the example for, um, let me try erasing this for a second. In terms of the example for just the regular pointer, uh, you could say, all right, well, you could say int, like on line 13 there. And now my pointer is q. And here are the types, here are the arguments that my function requires. And so that's actually now creating the function pointer q. And now I can, I can assign q to uh, whatever I want. And in that case, I assigned it to sum. OK, so that's kind of a little introduction to function pointers. And it, it is kind of cool. It's, not, it's just not a, it's not, it's just not a cool factor. There is actually use for this because um, you might end up having like a whole bunch of functions that you need to iterate through. And this is a really, like for example, if you're going to try, uh, you know, number crunching for some reason or another and you need to use different functions in loops, this is a, uh, a really handy way of doing that. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you next time.